All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insider interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to welcome back Brent Kettner, Kettner, who is over in Boston. How are you doing, Brent? Good, good, John. Happy to be here. Enjoyed the last conversation. I'm sure I'll enjoy this one as well. Absolutely. And Brent is the president of Win, uh, Winalytics, and he created the Winalytics Value Driven Growth Meta- Methodology. And what we're going to talk about today, I think this is a really interesting topic, uh, Brent, that you have introduced here. It's that sales to success, right? So how do you transition elegantly from sales to customer success? And how do you develop that as a continuum and not as uh, you know, because we're always great at inventing, you know, once upon a time, there was no such thing as customer success, right? It was like, you know, support, implementation, whatever. But we're always great at throwing things over the wall. Like, I've sold the deal here, go implement. Uh, uh, or I've, I've got the marketing lead here, go sell it uh, as I throw it over the wall. But those those models of throwing things over the wall, they just don't work anymore. And I think this is a classic example of a whole new area where the lines are kind of blurred. Yeah, no, and I love the throw it over the wall analogy, right? And and you're right, it used to be called customer service or implementation or whatever, but I mean, you know, sort of uh, last 10 years, the rise of the subscription economy. I mean, my, my wife now has a subscription for clothes, right? People have subscriptions for food and we have subscriptions for everything. Um, and so in that economy, customer success has become a third revenue team. Right. I mean, those the renewals and the incremental expansions become as important to growth as the net new. It's key to just kind of the ramping up the foundation. And so in that world, the way sales and success actually create a seamless experience around value becomes critical to your success. And so we we I'm thinking of activator dealer solution that sells a marketing automation tool into car dealerships. Right. So one model is the sale. Exactly. You said salespeople sell it and the account people fulfill it. They're both doing their own things and not really talking to each other. Right. Was the old model frictional elements in terms of, okay, well, what exactly did they buy? And you have to tell it over again, the story about what you bought um, and have to kind of guess at like, all right, well, great. I'm, I'm doing great on their service marketing what should I do on their sales marketing? You have to start the conversation over. If you just shift that to how well am I handing off all the things I talked about in sales discovery? Well, we talked about sales expansion and service expansion. And by the way, we talked about the cost of all our marketing systems and all the databases we have to connect to. Well, if we just are good and intentional and have a, either in your CRM, uh, in an account plan, in a Google doc, you hand those off to your customer service partners. Now what you set up is every time you do your quarterly business review, we just come right back to those goals. Right. Where are we on goal one? Is it time to move on to goal two? And so it just creates a much more seamless customer journey now to deepen conversations with us. Yeah, and the, and the good thing is what you're talking about there, uh, Brent, is is if you clearly establish the goals and there's a clear good handoff, everything is the information is all there, easy to access. So you're as you said, you're working to the you're literally working to to the same goals because the worst thing that happens, like let's put our customer hats on for a moment. The worst thing that happens as a customer is you get used to a salesperson, you go to the process with them, they build trust with you, you're feeling comfortable, and then you get you sign on the dotted line and suddenly it's like the implementation person will reach out to you. There's always that moment when you're like, well, you feel a little abandoned, to be perfectly honest. And and then this new person and the worst part is maybe they're not always aware of everything you talked about with the salesperson. So now you're again, you're feeling Gee. it just it's the une- the creeping uneasiness, I think, is is what happens from a customer point of view. Yeah, completely. I mean, you've captured that well. It's like, who is this new person? I've built rapport with you, my salesperson, sales guy or gal. Who is this new person? Are they going to be as good, right? Because if I close with you, I probably liked you. And I probably thought the vision you painted so for value. And so that you said it right, transitioning right is you got to hand off the notes. But the other thing we always encourage is 
you know, just a simple talk track like, hey, and, you know, my partner over here, Bobby or Jane, and I are going to get back together with you in 90 days, or maybe it takes 120 days. Let's pin a date to the calendar now so we can come back together and I'll look at how we're doing on those things, all those things you and I talked about. So close with, you know, hand off all the discovery, good discovery notes, but also close with, hey, when is this group on both sides, sales and and success, going to get back together with the customer to see how we're doing and be explicit with them? I'm not going away. I'm going to come back after they've done a great job of implementing you and see if there's other things you want to talk about. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and obviously, the other part of the equation that you touched upon earlier is the customer service, uh, the CSM, the customer service manager or customer success manager or whatever they're, they're, they're called in your organization. Ultimately, nowadays, especially in the subscription economy, their job is to make sure it gets renewed or the upsell opportunities or whatever. So it's more it's more than just a maintenance role nowadays. And that's why, again, they have to be working very closely with their sales manager or it needs to be laid out at the salesperson or it needs to be laid out clearly what the expectation is for selling from the the owner of the account as opposed to the customer success person. Yeah, and I think you hit on a couple of really critical things, just the definition of the customer success role uh, and how they partner with their sales or account manager. Because as you know, I mean, we do not encourage the customer success to own expansion sales other than incremental, right? Small expansions, Mm -hmm. adding seats, et cetera, because A, it's not really culturally aligned. They don't see themselves as salespeople. And B, um, it it kind of can create some friction in in the customer relationship. So we say, look, you are in the best position, CSMs, to often surface that next goal area. You're working every day with them and know when it's time. Uh, but you have to partner with your salesperson to put together the commercial terms if you identify an expansion opportunity. So separate those two things. But the other thing is a lot of CSMs actually have to change their mindset, right? They got to get out of the product and think, this isn't about my product. This is about how to make my customer more successful right so i got to continually think not just are more people using it more often but what is the business outcome that that helps them with and shift their mindset that way um i have one story on that um you know jeremy uh i'll just go with the first name this team's gone to the win at burning glass technologies which is labor market technology and they sell both into HR departments and they sell into higher ed and they're, they're like five different problems they can solve for a higher ed campus with that labor market data. It can help with initial enrollments, undergraduate can help with graduate enrollments because it's building the case on degree to ROI. It can help with career services, right? It can help with um, the workforce development. Uh, and I'm, I'm missing one, but there's like five places a lot of the CSMs in that team are like, I don't want to talk about those goals because I feel salesy. That's not my job. My job is to train on the product. And Jeremy would just start every CSM call with, remember, there are five things we can help your campus with. We're working on this one today, number one. As we go through the platform, I want you to think about other colleagues that might benefit. And then he'd come back to that slide at the end, like, did you think of anybody? 40, 50% of the time, just by being intentional about the problems we could solve, he would get an introduction yeah. to deepen that relationship. I, I love that story. That's that's a fantastic story. And I, and I think it illustrates a, a couple of things. And you to just go back again, you touched on the customer success manager mindset. And I think that that's, that's an absolute critical one because as you said, it can get very product fo- focused almost almost like technical support in many ways. It's like, you know, let me make sure I help you with this feature or explain this feature or whatever, but not the business outcomes. It's not focused on the business outcomes. And I think that's obviously where you, you where we need to bring CSMs is so that they're focused first on the business outcomes. And then, yeah, what the product does to support it. But that's where the magic is. If you If the customer feels like you're really supporting their business initiatives. Yeah, 100%. And we, 
when you talked about the sort of the work we do on value-driven growth methodology, we, we talk about a more value-driven go-to-market strategy because we want this idea that every part of your go-to-market strategy needs to be shifted to buyer or customer value. And CSMs are critical in that. I mean, look, at the end of the day, if you pivot your buyers to, hey, hey, how are we? So go back to Activator. If you bring them back to, this is really about getting more new service customers into your drive and increasing the dollar value of every service visit. And can we do more of that? I'd be a heck of a lot more interested in talking with you than like, hey, here are some more mailers we could send to different categories of customers. Or can we clean up your data a little bit more? That's important. That drives the outcome. But are you seeing how that's getting more people into the service drive? This is the, what we've seen in the data. So your buyers and customers are going to be a lot more excited to talk to you if you constantly bring them back to what's the business outcome here? What's the business value? And how can we get better together and partnering around that? Yeah, no, I'm absolutely. Uh, because what you don't want is you don't want is for the customer to feel that they were dropped down a level. I think that's the important part, because if I feel like I, I was handed off from, yeah, an enterprise salesperson, top great guy, but now I'm down at the what I consider maybe the customer's customer support level, I'm down a level. So I think it's really important that with your customer success, that it it is the the customer perceives it as if it's still on the same kind of if you like sophistication level as the people they were pre, um, engaging with previously yep yep i mean th this is the other thing the csms i think the other way honestly that you know csms are obviously usually more product oriented they're a little bit more you know interested in just reading content being experts in their field um, we always say, hey, use that also. If you connect the business goals, you can now invite thought partnership conversations, right? With some of your best customers, like, you know, it's going well around a certain, you know, around how you can connect your service drive, they call it in the dealers, to sales. Hey, we have a webinar coming up on that. You guys are having an awesome experience. Would you be willing to be featured on that webinar? Would you be willing to write a blog for us? Oh, and by the way, do you have any peers, you know, that are working on a similar problem? So where the magic is for CSMs when you connect to business goals is now that thought leadership, that thought partnership, bringing you into our thought partnership, which they're really well positioned to do and make asks about. Yeah. And the, and the other thing, Brent, is I, I think the other part where you need to be careful is also the, the salesperson and the CSM or that group that they're in regular contact or enough so that they understand any nuances that the CSM may pick up. I know obviously they will put that in the system or in the CRM system and notes and all that, but also a kind of quick high level review of kind of the relationship, what's going on, have their business goals shifted, anything like that. Obviously those are critical that, that sales and CSM have ongoing conversations. Yeah, hundred percent. And this is, um, we encourage, on exactly that, you think of you usually have a quarterly business review, and sometimes that's every four months because three months is too frequently. Some people go to six months, but to your point, that should be the trigger um, to then say, hey, sales and, and success, it, should we get back together on that account, right? And what we encourage, and this is in the activator case, again, you know, they do a monthly consult deck and around that, there are kind of four slides that can suggest an expansion opportunity. So they'll, if, if there's enough expansion opportunity, then they'll huddle. How do we present that? Is this one we bring you back into or do I qualify it and then hand it off to you for another discovery call? But that quarterly business review becomes that opportunity to huddle and say, how are we taking that account deeper? Uh, and so I, I think 100%, I think what we always say so we encourage people to develop a, a set of expansion plays, right? Let's agree to a set of expansion plays that you might run uh, as a way of just making it easier for the CSM to, to surface those indirectly uh, and then share them with the salesperson. Yeah, and no, I think that's a great, and I think that's a great example there of strategically working together, like as a tag team, uh, doing different things, as you said, like you know maybe the salesperson is helping the, 
the CSM understand where the expansion areas are, where they how they can uh, how they can you know percolate up the the conversation or the opportunity. So yeah, I mean I think obviously for if this is to be successful, it has to be very very tight. Uh, the, the relationship be very very tight and fluid between the two. Yep, yep, and that's why I mean. We kicked around different names for it, but it really is a sales to success expansion process. Yeah. You know, it's like to your point, it's those have to be hooked up and you need a process to then resync on the goals, updated. Is there anything new in their environment? And you, you can do it in your CRM, you can do it in a plant uh, account planning tool like uh, Pipeline or CRM has. You can do it in a Google Doc if you don't have an automation system, but it's really being intentional about the the pair on our side, the sales and the CSM coming back together. How do we use that time? Well, that process is critical for sure. And, and I think the other thing, Brent, is in, as we mentioned, you know, being in a subscription uh, heavy world today, the fact is it's dead easy for people to change switch. A lot of people have zero yep. connection and, it, and it, whether they're a consumer or whether they're a business. I mean, you, there's business applications that people use, that companies use all the time, but they have very little relationship with the provider. And if a new one comes on the market, maybe it's two dollars cheaper and it has one feature extra. You're like, eh, OK, we'll switch over. Uh, so this is this is another area where your CSM function becomes in, in very critical because there again is, a, is an opportunity for differentiation. Yeah, yeah, no, it's really well put. And if we go back to this idea of, you know, in the sales process, how broad is your discovery? Like how many goals did you service? So with Activator Dealer Solutions, may, maybe service is the critical problem, but I've also talked to them how I can help with sales or secure inventory or consolidate their marketing automation stack. And so now in that way, they're thinking about me as a more uh, trusted advisor people or potentially a strategic partner, right? As opposed to a point solution. And so to your point, if you're just a point solution competing on price, really easy to get lost. But if you've already kind of opened their mind that, hey, man, there might be four or five things we can do together and you have fewer vendors to deal with, we can give you some cost advantage, better data insights you're going to get by working on those you're kind of setting up that enterprise value prop and moving outside of that cost competition on the point solution no, no, no question and the csms have to constantly bring people like the jeremy example constantly bring them back to hey we're working on this but remember there are other things we could do uh together i think of um you know, Lawrence Whittle, who was the CEO when we started with a company called Parsable, uh, and he would say, you know, the highest form of customer care is introducing a customer to a use case you've already proven with their peers. Yep. There's no conflict there. It's a win-win for everybody. <laughs> and absolutely, absolutely. And so, yeah, so that's why I think it's critical now. You've got a great chance to differentiate in how you uh, in how you deal with customers, how what their experience is end to end, and what the customer success uh, experience is like, and that's why I think I think it's a really it's a critical in the growing business. The other thing I think, uh, just on the last point, is what what customer success uh, managers can often do is talk to the customer about their other systems. Have you linked, you know, um, you're working with, you know, obviously I'm working with Pipeline or CRM, but do you have a need, you know, have you thought about integrating it with some of your other systems and that? So again, anything you can do to uh, bring your solution and get it more integrated with other solutions into their business life. I mean, the chances of you uh, being able to retain and upsell a customer increases exponentially with how connected your system becomes. I understand. I mean, you're not going to say it. I'm going to say it. You know, Salesforce, um, really hard, whatever the usability, uh, really hard to unseat because they connect all your enterprise mm -hmm. modules, sure. you know, sure. forecasting, finance, your everything else. So to your point, like it's a great strategy to integrate with a bunch of other stuff. So if you're part of a critical workflow, you're going to stay around a lot longer. It's a great point. Yeah, and that's why I think with customer success managers, if they can think more broadly about this, the the um, stickability, if you like, how can we get ourselves more entrenched? Um, that's a huge service to the company. That is a huge service. 
And it goes beyond like, it's not just about the number of users, right? Or how much are they using in easy stats, but how many points of connection that are creating business value, that, that's a different way of thinking about it. That's, it's a great uh, push that, yeah. that will make you stickier. Absolutely. Well, listen, thanks, Brent. All of Brent's information is going to be below this below this video. But before we go, Brent, do please do tell people a little bit more about you and your company. Yeah, um, I guess the, the main thing to point out, we have a book coming out, the Revenue Acceleration Playbook on April 5th. Uh, you can go to just go to the website. Our book website is authenticitywins.com. Uh, which will take you to our book landing page and uh, you can download a forward and chapter one for free Fantastic. right there. So they can get to know us a little bit better uh, in that way and how we think about what you open with, you know, building faster growth by shifting from product to value driven conversations. Fantastic. There you go. Um... Arrow quickly, uh, the Revenue Acceleration Playbook. Okay, as you see here, you can unlock the first chapter. I would encourage you to go. You can see when that is our book. All of these links will be below the video, but I just wanted to make sure you have it there. You see, nice red book. You can't miss it. <laughs> what well, wasn't my first choice, but um, the book, but Red Pops. <laughs> it certainly does. Well, it looks great anyway. So I encourage people to check it out. Listen, thanks again, Brent, and thank you all for watching and listening and I'll see you all again for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you, John.